Today's review is about a weapon that I think is really special. It's one I've been using more and more, and I got some really good PvE and PvP gameplay to show you, and then you can start thinking about the application as we go on. There's a couple of good routes with it too. I got the exact one I was looking for. I'm gonna go through my reasoning. Vengeful Whisper, Precision Bow, the first strand legendary bow in Destiny 2, shortly after the exotic Wishkeeper dropped. But with it being a legendary, with the perks that it has, you have a lot of utility. It more than holds its own. It's awesome. There's a number of things you can do with it. There are PvE roles you can take in a more challenging content, roles that can synergize a build, roles to have fun with in PvP, or just strong roles in PvP. So when it drops, there's a lot of things to look for. You get it from the dungeon, and after you get it, you just farm that first encounter over and over to try to get roles. That's what I did. Let's start off with the origin trait, probably one of the worst in the entire game, Sundering. Destroying vehicles and constructs gains this weapon, bonus reload speed and charge rate, and that includes barricades, turrets, stasis crystals, other objects created on the field. Not too much application with this bow. So I'm going to start off with the role you're going to be seeing all review. Polymer String, Accuracy Masterwork, Fiberglass Arrow, Slice, Hatchling. And this role can be used on any subclass, obviously elevated with Strand. As we know with Hatchling, Precision Final Blows are rapidly defeating targets with a non-precision weapon spawns a Threadling at the target's location. And then Slice. Casting your class ability allows this weapon to sever targets on hit for a brief duration, and you have a maximum number of targets you can hit. And what's so nice about Slice, like at the later ends of the coil, like right here, it's at the very end, I don't have any heavy ammo left. I have on the Wish that gives 300% more class ability, so I might dodge a ton. So I just keep dodging and hitting all the larger targets with Slice. And it's a huge difference. Anything that you hit with Slice is huge. And I go to other areas of the coil. If they're not hit with Slice, they just mow you down. But with that debuff, 40% less damage that they're dealing. And pound for pound, I believe that Slice is one of the strongest perks in the game for what it does right? Especially with the bow. And that's why on this one, I wanted the 100 accuracy. I could be safe at a distance, take out rank and file enemies, or dodge to slice higher tier enemies, complete safety, and I have that 100 accuracy at that range. There were times I was on Gunslinger, able to slice the bigger targets. I still have Dragon's Breath. I still have the Ignition Kit going on with that. I have Celestial Nighthawk. Other times I would either be on maybe Broodweaver, Strand Hunter, whatever it is, and then take advantage of everything that's going on within the artifacts, such as Unraveling Rounds, everything going on with the Strand Kit, such as Tangles, just getting everything going. It's an awesome bow, and I think it checks a ton of boxes. You have something for ad clear, you have something for larger targets. If you're a solo player, it's flat out awesome. Maybe you hit a champion with it before you stun them. A ton of utility. You can take it in solo stuff. There's application for it in certain scenarios with raids. I've been having a blast with it, and it marks another legendary combat bow that could do something really, really special. Wish Keeper, Wish Ender, Virgilus Curve, Trinity Goal Monarch, Tiku. We all know that those are good, but when you start getting into the legendary bows, Prius Steinex has a couple things. Archer's Tempo Precision Instrument, or Archer's Tempo Successful Warm Up. There's Tyranny of Heaven with its Dragonfly Incandescent. That's just in its own right an awesome little bow. But this, again, not even playing with the strand kit, being able to slice on demand, really, really strong. And this is where player preference comes in. Because in that third column, we have slice, keep away, enlightened action, hit fire grip, archer's tempo, explosive head. In the final column, hatchling, high ground, offhand strike, precision instrument, successful warm up, collective action. Hatchling's a big draw to this thing. And I love the utility of slice, but something like archer's tempo is going to be really, really good too. After those precision hits, get decreased draw time. That we can get hatchling going, or explosive head hatchling. And I I believe that there's actually a weird interaction with explosive head precision instrument. I do think that it doubles up your hits, but only half of that is getting the precision damage or the precision instrument buff, I should say, but it's still a really cool interaction that's gonna do fine. And with me personally, these combat bows, the legendary versions, have to have something special. Like, I use Tyranny of Heaven. With it being solar with the artifact mod, it's actually really, really good right now. Now this, again, I could take it on any sub that I want and slice things and then have some ad clear with Hatchling. It's just really, really good. Now this roll for PvP, let's jump there real quick. I'm just gonna show a couple of clips and then I'm gonna walk back through why this works so well with Vengeful Whisper. First one's just the hatchling interaction on a precision bow that does 152 to the crit. They have advantage. Zone A captured. You have advantage. You're in the lead. On Strand, I have the Thread of Evolution Fragment. Threadlings travel farther and deal additional damage. This bow hits heavy as a precision frame, 152 to the crit. After the headshot, the Threadling drops. It travels, I watch where it goes, it deals 45 to the next enemy. Then I follow up with the 152 headshot. 197 damage, give or take, 
with that combination, it results in just a chaining of one shots. Something pretty special that this bow can do. Or something like this, just being strand. I have the tangle. I also have on the aspect that creates the strand tornado. That thing spawns up. And then this thing doing 152 to the crit. Me getting final blows. Threadling's going. Unravel's being thrown around everywhere. Like every enemy that spawned right there, I got a piece of. Just getting hits. Just really, really good on the strand kit. And then we get into slice itself. In the crucible, it makes your opponent deal 15% less damage when they get hit with it. And with this bow, it's kind of like Monarch a bit. Because we get hit with Monarch, you get taken out of the fight. With this thing, you get hit with it for 152. That alone is going to take you out of the gunfight, but you're also severed. You're in red health, one shot, you deal less. In a straight 1v1, if you sever, let's say, a Thorn user or Ace of Spades, they're going to have to four shot you. I've severed supers, survived swipes from the supers because of them being severed. It's the ability to constantly take people out of fights, and that goes a long way. And with this roll, Hatchling, the Threadlings can do enough. They can kind of follow up with those one shots. And for me, this roll, this is where I want to stay. I'm going to get into some other rolls here in a second, but Slice is strong. Hatchling, as far as the Crucible, is really good with the Fragment added. I can make people do less. It's got 100 accuracy. It's insanely accurate from the air. It's good, but the main purpose is PvE. I love it there. And when new content comes up, especially if there's something like a Wizard or a Colossus, and you know that they can just absolutely wail on you, Slice is going to be nice in those situations. But let's get back to the perks for PvE. It's going to be Slice with Hatchling or a completely different route. Archer's Tempo, Hatchling, Archer's Tempo, Successful Warm-Up possibly. And for those to be good, if you're not going to go Hatchling, something like Successful Warm-Up or Precision Instrument, it is Strand. You would need to get the Strand kit going with Unravel, whatever it is, to make it perform to its top potential. Explosive Head's always going to be good. Things like that. And depending on what kind of player you are, what you want to do with it, something like Archer's Tempo Hatchling might be the best for you. There's nothing wrong with that. I just value Slice Hatchling. As far as the Crucible, we have Archer's Tempo Successful Warm-Up. We have Hip Fire Grip Offhand Strike or Archer's Tempo Offhand Strike. Those things can work, especially if you have really, really high accuracy on it. And with these bows, this is a precision frame, so it is high inherent accuracy, high inherent aim assist for whatever reason. It's got 72 base aim assist, but it's pretty locked in on the things that you want you want a nice bit of accuracy. You also want to get your draw speed a little bit faster. Something like polymer string, flexible string, elastic string. When it comes to the arrow, the compact arrow shaft or fiberglass. I prefer fiberglass mostly. It gives you the 15 accuracy, takes away some stability. But usually with your bow strings, you're taking away accuracy and that's kind of offsetting it to get your draw time down. And it's all RNG. I'm mostly looking for the combination. Polymer got me down to 648 draw. I'm okay with that. I have fiberglass. Again, it's the 100 accuracy. I also have the accuracy masterwork. It just simply for slice hatchling doing its thing yeah do i wish i had a little bit faster draw speed yeah but i'm not worried about it i have the combination all in all i think it's one of the better bows in the game i do it being a legendary because with it being a legendary as you saw you could still do your dragon's breaths you could still do things like that or maybe you could be gallerhorn for your team it opens up your possibilities so i don't have a bad thing to say about it and i'm not sure if people are talking about this or like this bow i think it's one of the better weapons we've got in a long long time and I'd put it within the season, one of the top five weapons to get this season. I really, really would. But it all depends on what you value and how you like to play. Again, I play solo a lot. Having the sever on demand to be able to survive is a big deal to me, especially on Strand when I get Woven Mail, get that DR and they're doing less. There's a lot of survivability with that. Nothing but good things from me. I highly recommend that you go get it, mess around with it. There's a ton of utility here. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. We are currently in 2024, finally. We'll see what Final Shape brings. And I have a ton of content to get through. On my list, I have 12 videos. So I'm gonna try to rapid fire them out this year. I'm gonna do things a little bit differently with my production process. And I'm gonna give the things that need special attention, special attention, and the things not so much. I'm gonna talk, best way I can describe it, more from the heart. Meaning, because with my content, there's a lot of numbers, there's a lot of perks, and I wish I could tell you things off the top of my head. I can't, some things I can, but a lot of it is scripted so I can get through and get the right information out. But for a good amount of content this year that doesn't need that direct in-depth analysis, I'm gonna talk through, talk from the heart. And I think they're gonna turn out really, really good. Let's talk about Vengeful Whisper down below. And one last thing, if you haven't done the dungeon, 
I tried the LFG for it, and there's actually posts for people that either want to do fresh runs, that have no experience, that want to accept people that have, that have no experience. But there's also posts that say flat out, we're farming the first boss for loot. So if you want to get more of the sidearm or this bow, you can find one of those in-game LFG posts, get with that team, and just farm that first boss over and over trying to get rolls. Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.